Good morning, and welcome to worship at First Christian Church, Lawrenceburg. We gather in our sanctuary, and we gather in the sanctuaries of your home. No matter who you are or where you are, you are welcome in the loving presence of Jesus Christ this day. There are several announcements to share. This Wednesday at 7 p.m. we continue our study of Romans via Zoom. If you missed last week, it's okay, as we will be looking at a new scripture each week. This week we will focus on Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 12 through 25. Our produce giveaway continues each Thursday in August. If you have produce from your garden that you would like to share, we invite you to bring it to the church on Wednesday mornings. On Tuesday, August the 25th, between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m., we will be hosting a special event, a drive through blessing. It is an opportunity for your ministers to greet you and to give a blessing. This is for children, youth, and adults. And the first hundred people will receive an age-appropriate blessing bag. School children are invited to bring your backpack for a back-to-school blessing as well. And, are you ready? Free Taylor Bell ice cream provided by the church will be available. We hope you'll come and share. As we gather for worship, let us be reminded that God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. The worriers and the wanderers can call on God by name. And in this time, we can remember all the ways that God has graced us. In these moments, we are reminded that God is with us all. Gospel, help us work your purpose. 
Let us pray. Creator Spirit, hear us sing. Breathe fire into the praise we bring. The mighty wind still lives in power. The church renewed responds this hour. May this time of worship fill us and move us in your glorious name. Amen. Amen. Well, there's lots going on in the life of the church. Mike has held several online camp experiences with our youth. And he was responsible helping with the planning of these experiences for the region. All three of your ministers are working on blessing bags that you will receive at the drive through blessing. Lots of work will be happening around the church in the near future. Beginning tomorrow, work will begin on new audio-visual equipment for the sanctuary. Some of our camera uh, stuff is already in. Our building and grounds ministry is looking to repair and paint windows in the sanctuary, the balcony level. We are looking at having our driveway repaved at the entrance to the parking lot. We have already repaired a broken window in the chapel as well as installed a new door slot for leaving mail and other information. Also, a couple of months ago, we installed our new sound system, which is working so well. All of this would not be possible without your gifts to the church. Thank you to everyone for your generous support of the church that allows the work of the church to continue. And even though we may not be meeting in the building, the ministry of the church continues. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for generous hearts and spirits that see the vision, that give so that your word might continue in this community and literally around the world. Challenge us always to give as you have given to us, for we pray it in Christ's holy name. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, the bells at the church are ringing to remind us that God is with us in all the times of our life and that God is with you this day. 
We lift up the family of Zachary Kamer, who passed from this life to eternal life on Wednesday. Zachary is the husband of Jessica Brumley, granddaughter of Chuck and Laverne Brumley. A private service was held in Georgia on Saturday. We also lift up the family of John Crutcher, who passed from this life to eternal life on Monday. John is the nephew of Dick and Misha Crutcher. A private family service will be held. And we lift up the family of Connor Pike, who passed from this life to eternal life last Saturday evening. Connor was a good friend of Dakota Wells, who is the fiancé of Jordan Beasley. His service was held on Friday. And there are many others within the life of our congregation and far beyond who are struggling with many things. And we know that God surrounds each and every one of us. And so this morning I invite you to lift up a name wherever you are of someone you would like to lift to God. And certainly God hears the silence of our hearts as well. Let us pray together. O oh God who is ever near, even when we safe distance six feet apart, we come to recognize you as strength that sustains, as wisdom that foresees, as clarity that discovers, as love that understands, as mercy that forgives. We praise your holy name today and always. O oh God of all comfort, we come this morning lifting our prayers for those whose hearts are heavy, whose hurt is deep in the loss of those they love. Source of compassion, help us to cry out loud, to hold each other gently, to live with unanswerable questions and this gaping hole of loss. Help us to reach out to others who are suffering, to show them our love, to say the kind word. Remind us all that you are always with us, to carry us when we think we can go no further. O oh God of the seeds, the cell, the notes in a song, such good things come from something small. A tiny bebble, pebble causes water to ripple. A collection of pennies become a dollar. Likewise, the droplets of our good works fill the sea of your divine soul. One word, one action, one display of love after another turns into a symphony of blessing. We pray this day that you would help us to be your people, O oh God. Help us to be your people of peace in a world overwhelmed by violence. Help us to be your people of reconciliation in a world where the powerful seek to divide and conquer. Help us to be your people of community in a world literally sick with individualism. Help us to be your people of sacrifice in a world of entitlement. Help us to be your people of generosity in a world obsessed with security. And help us to be your people of grace in a world run by raiding systems. Loving and patient God, we believe you have created us to improve our world, not to exploit it. To bring blessings to others, not burdens. And to instill peace, not conflict. We know you hear our prayers because we have seen the results. We feel your love and presence in our lives because we become better people when we do. We pray in the name and spirit of the greatest example of what it means to be of God. 
Jesus our Christ. Amen. Still, I know that I am God. Be still, I know that I am God. Be still, I know that I am God. This morning, our scripture reading comes from. Romans, the chap chapter 8. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. There is, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the Spirit that dwells in you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, may the meditation of all of our hearts and the words of my mouth point to you and give you honor and glory. In your name we pray, amen. Well, when I was a child, we didn't do a whole lot of vacations. Five children... Um, an enlisted airman, there wasn't a whole lot of extra money for extended vacations. We did day trips and maybe one overnight here and there. But, but my family, my parents did pull enough resources for us to go on one week-long vacation to a beach. We were living in England and we spent a week in the beaches in Cornwall. I think I was maybe in the second or third grade. My brother Bob had to work so he was not able to go on this family vacation with us. Well, one day on the beach, I noticed that there was something shiny in the sand. I picked it up, and it was this beautiful blue crystal. I felt like I had stumbled across a treasure. And throughout the week, every day as I walked along the beach, I looked for and I found several more of these beautiful crystals, different colors, green and gold and dark brown and clear and I put them in a little shell box that I had bought at the gift shop. And I carried these crystals in this box like the treasure that I believed them to be. And I could not wait to get home and to show these to my brother. When we got home, I ran upstairs and I took my little shell box and I emptied out all those crystals onto his desk so that he could see how beautiful they were. He looked at the crystals he picked one up and he put it toward the light and he said, Oh, Mickey, 
these aren't crystals. These are just broken pieces of glass that probably came from someone's beer bottle that they left on the beach. Suddenly, my treasure had turned into trash. What were beautiful crystals were really just broken pieces of glass. I put my crystals back into my shell box and I tucked them away somewhere in my room. Forgot about them. But though I wondered, though, what is broken can still be beautiful, even if it does come from a beer bottle tossed out onto a beach. Today we are beginning a series of sermons on Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Paul saw that the Christian life can be difficult, and when troubling times arise, it can be hard to see and to claim Jesus' gift of hope. It can be hard to see and claim Jesus' gift of peace. It's hard to see the sustaining presence of God in the midst of brokenness, a presence that will show the way of wholeness and unity that we can find in Jesus. It's hard to see beauty even within ourselves when there is so much around us that is broken. So we are going to spend some time over the next few weeks looking at Paul and his letter to the church in Rome. But let me lay it out here at the beginning. Paul and I have a love-hate relationship. He is not my favorite biblical writer. And I have to remind myself often that Paul is just a pastor who loves his people and loves the church and longs for them to know and live in the fullness of life that Jesus offers. And to the church in Rome, Paul reminds the people of God that God's love in Jesus is not something that comes and goes. It's not something that is contingent upon our circumstances. And difficult times do not mean that the Spirit of God is not at work. They do not mean that Jesus' love is no longer there. I think many of us might be familiar with the last few verses of Romans chapter 8, the verses that remind us that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. But I don't think we are as familiar with these first few verses of chapter 8. They are not easy to read. They are not easy to understand. Paul, at times, is not easy to read and not easy to understand. But that's a whole other, whole class that's needed for that, and I'm not going to delve into that characteristic of Paul's writing today. But you may have already noticed in this morning's reading and in your familiar passages that you are familiar with of Paul's writing that Paul is a fan of not necessarily opposites, but Paul is a fan of either-or concepts. To name a few, life, and death, sin, righteousness, flesh, and spirit, works, and faith. In today's reading, Paul is putting forth the tension and the conflict that comes from lives living in the flesh or lives living in the spirit. This passage has often been misunderstood as to read into Paul's talk of the flesh as referring to our physical bodies. This whole sense that our bodies are bad and that we are essentially bad and only in Jesus can we be found to be good. There's so much wrong with that interpretation. It completely ignores the creation story. It completely ignores the very first stories of faith that teach us that we are created in the very image of God, that we are created good and beautiful, and that never changes. It certainly can become distorted. It certainly can be forgotten. It certainly can be lost. It's lost when we lose our identity of created children of God, all of us. We lose it when we shift our focus in living more towards the I 
and away from the we. We lose it. We lose our sense of identity when we forget that we are a community connected to one another through the Spirit of God. The flesh that Paul is talking about here is the ego, excuse me, the ego of the self. When we are guided by our ego, we are guided by what we want. We are guided by what we desire. We turn our focus and our priorities inward. Focused and guided not by what God calls from us, but what we want. More and more, we are living into individualistic focus. What I want. What I need. What my rights are. What makes me feel happy or what makes me feel good. I my, me. When Paul speaks of the flesh here in this text, Paul is pointing out all of the ways that we are guided by our desires, by my desires, not what God desires. All of the ways Paul is talking about that we are self-focused, self-oriented, not God-focused, God-oriented, spirit-focused and spirit-oriented. We are living more and more, I believe, into an increasing first-person singular world. I. Here's a hard question to ponder. How often do our sentences begin with I and end with me? Let's push it a little more. How often do our prayers begin with I and end with me? Please don't hear in this that Paul is asking us to not take care of ourselves. This is not about ignoring self-care and healthy living. In fact, when we pay attention to the leading of the Spirit and our connection to one another, we will at the same time be giving care to ourselves. And we might also be tempted to read this literally, living to the flesh. That living to the flesh leads to death, Paul says. Well, it may not literally take our lives. We may not literally die. But living self-focus, it does kill the fullness of life, little by little. Life Abundant, full, and whole is taken, chipped away, little by little by little. When we turn our, priori- our priorities and when we focus primarily on ourselves. Life focused primarily on self is draining. It is spirit draining, life draining, and peace is difficult to experience, to find. Paul counsels that we are to set the mind on the spirit. This is the mindset that leads to real abundant life. This is the mindset that will lead us to life and peace. It's a life that looks outward rather than inward. It's a life that finds satisfaction in giving and in sharing. It's a life that finds healing and wholeness in caring for the whole of community, not just for ourselves. And it is a life that is marked by gratitude. Life in the Spirit can take our dried up hopes and dreams and put new flesh on them. Life in the Spirit can restore our hope. Now Paul is not making reference to life and life after death Paul says in those last verses about our mortal bodies, Paul is assuring us that there is hope in life now. With all that is broken around us and within us, there is hope. We know a better way. 
It's not an easy way, but we know a better way. It's not the way that many around us might be choosing. It certainly isn't the way that is celebrated and rewarded and lifted up. Individual strength and independence is what is celebrated and rewarded. Taking care of me and mine is the growing trend. And the world groans with the pain of this brokenness. But the Spirit The Spirit can take those broken pieces and bring them to a place of wholeness and beauty. The Spirit can take our brokenness and move us to a place of wholeness and beauty. But we can't do it on our own. And that is the good news. The gift that God gives us in Jesus. We don't have to do it on our own. In and through Jesus, we see a better way. In and through Jesus, we know a better way, and we can choose to live in that better way. A few years later, my dad received orders that we were to move to Germany. And so we were all instructed, all five of us, the children, were to go and clean out and clean up and begin to pack our rooms. So I went to my room, and as I sorted and I cleaned and I packed up my room to get ready for this move, I found that shell box with the broken pieces of glass. I remember holding them in my hand, these broken pieces of beer bottles. They were more than shattered glass. They were transformed into beautiful treasures that brought joy to a young child. I didn't see broken beer glass. I saw something beautiful. There is still so much beauty to see in this broken world. And we can be a part of the healing as we learn to not care only for ourselves and our circle of people. We can be part of the healing when we seek the guidance of the Spirit and learn to care for all. The brokenness around us can't be healed until we look beyond ourselves, outside of ourselves, to the hurting that is around us. What will we see? What will we experience when we live this life in the Spirit? What will we see and what will we experience when we live lives not focused, turning inward to ourselves? What will that look like? Paul tells us in his letter to the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 5, the the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. Peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. To set our mind on the Spirit is to find life in its fullness. To set our mind on the Spirit is to find peace. To set our mind on the Spirit is to bring that life And to bring that light to others. To set our mind on the Spirit is to remember that we are connected to one another, created to live right alongside with each other. I know it's hard. And it's so easy to be overwhelmed by what is going on. And and it's tempted to pull away. And maybe for a time we might need to do that. But we can't stay there. The Spirit invites us back. The Spirit invites us to participate in the healing of what is broken. L. R. Nost, she is an author and activist has, and counselor and has written parenting books. She has a quote that's been floating around for a while. Her quote is, Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. 
all things break and all things can be mended. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go. Love intentionally, extravagantly, and unconditionally. The broken world waits in the darkness for the light that is you. May the Spirit of Christ that dwells in you be the light of Christ for others, that they too may see the love that makes life whole. As I was reading from some lectionary for this day from the to figure out some commentary, to figure out where to go with communion meditation. I was really struck by the, guy, the writer I was reading because he was excited that this chapter 8 had 11 references to the Holy Spirit in the first 11 verses. And again, just what he said, set your mind on the, on the Spirit was his, his focus, that we set our mind on who the Spirit was. And he had a really interesting line. He said, the Holy Spirit gets inside you and you start to move, right? You start to dance. You start to go out into that world and see others in a new light and way. As I thought about that, I thought about this table. Because when we come to this table, for me, it's a place that gets inside of you. It allows you to be who you are, to come to this place and say, God, I just had a horrible week, or God, I had a great week, or God, here I am, use me. But then it, it challenges you to step out from being you into being the world, stepping out from these pews, stepping out from your homes, from your couches, wherever you may be right now, to step in this world and say, Yep, I'm here to serve God in a new and different way. I'm here to use this bread and this cup to share God's love with every person we see on the streets, at schools, at work, at Walmart, wherever you may be. This table is using you to share who God is in this world. So this morning, as you partake of your bread and your cup, know that it is blessed by God to share, not just for you, but the world that we live in. Let us pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us recall that on the night our Savior was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it, and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Steadfast and loving God, your holy word is a beam in the dark and a light for our paths. We pray that you would lead us in doing your will on this earth. We confess that we do not always take the paths that reflect your ways. We are too influenced by the ways that look easy and profitable for us. Forgive us when we take the wrong paths in our lives. You have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, to die for us. You have given us the Holy Spirit to always be with us. And you have given us not only life, but eternal life. In the eating of this bread, which reminds us of the body of Jesus, allow us to dwell in the Spirit and in peace. In the name of our Savior we pray. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have been born again of the Spirit by faith and are therefore spiritually alive in Christ. As we share this cup, we join together in praise that the Spirit of the resurrected Lord Jesus lives in us. 
at this table where we drink from the cup of life, nourish our souls and refresh our lives, and sustain us to do your work and your will in this world. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. more that rises in the morning than the sun more that shines in the night than just the moon there's more than just this fire here that keeps me warm in a shelter that is larger than this room and there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment and music higher than the songs that I can sing stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things. So if I stand, let me stand on the promise to pull me through. And if I can't, let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you. And if I sing, let me sing joy that is born in me these songs and if I weep let it be as a man who is longing for his home there's more that dances on the prairie than the wind and more that pulses in the ocean than the tide there's a love that's deeper than the love between friends, more gentle than a mother's when a baby's at her side. And there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment, and a music higher than the songs that I can sing. The stuff of earth competes for the allegiance, I owe only to the giver of all good things. So if I stand, let me stand. Christ that joined us in this place goes with us to all the places we'll be this week. Let us pray. Ever faithful and compassionate God, for this time of worship we give you praise. We pray that it has lifted our spirits and given us what we need to move through this week. And as we do, help us to remember, O oh God, that you are white there beside us. Help us to remember you will give us strength and courage. Help us to remember that you will give us love to share. Help us to remember that you are with us in all times and all places. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 